little bit about the, this most recent step. Why did we decide not necessarily to go from Hadoop into, into Snowflake, but also why did we decide on Snowflake versus the other cloud vendors, um, cloud warehouse vendors? So, and this links back to where I started with the with the four principles that we that we adopted very early on, um, and particular to. So, I've always wanted to provide um, analytic resources fast and to and to pretty much to everyone um, that wanted them. One of the key problems with doing that is that sooner or later, and I, I've I've hinted towards this already, users start to trip over each other. You can try and protect CPU or memory, um, and the, some of the Hadoop platforms did allow for that. SQL Server, to some extent, allows for that. But ultimately, if you're running on a single set of machines, you're going to hit some kind of bottleneck, ultimately, with either CPU or memory or drives, um, just your hard drive space or the speed that you can get the data off the drive. We've hit all three of those at different points and tried to juggle um, juggle that, but ultimately you're just moving the problem around. The, if you're dealing with limited resources and you've got a growing use case, ultimately you're going to use those resources and then what's going to happen is things are going to slow down, things are going to start failing, and you're going to start having problems being able to retrieve the data in the way that you want and in the speed that you want. The the thing that Snowflake brings to bear here, one of the core, per, one of the absolutely core um, value propositions that we see in Snowflake, um, is the fact that you can use discrete warehouses, separate warehouses, um, effectively separate processing clusters, to interact with the same data. So you have centralized data, you have discrete clusters of processing. Um, what we did is we effectively set up different warehouses for each different business unit, even in some cases for different parts of our ETL processes, so we can protect them from each other. At this point, if someone on my marketing team goes in and, and writes some problematic SQL, they may slow things down for the rest of the marketing team, or they may cost us um, some money, but they have no impact on my finance team, or on my ETL, or on my sales team, right? Or any other team that's working on top of the data. Um, same thing if the sales team, you know, has a big conference coming up and is hitting the system really hard, that has no impact on marketing's ability to get the data, um, and that that is just a huge benefit. It also means that I can um, predict SLAs and data delivery timeframes much more accurately because I haven't got processes or jobs slowing down just because there's um, ad hoc workload coming into the system that I couldn't predict. Um, it also means that I can optimize my cost better because effectively within Snowflake, I can modify the size of the cluster to what is actually being used rather than a one size fits all. So if I have a job that really doesn't do, you know, needs to run consistently, but doesn't really do a lot of heavy processing, I can put that on a much cheaper cluster and save the money, um, whilst at the same time having a much heavier processing, maybe a data science job that needs a lot of CPU power. I can put that, uh, I can put that on a big cluster and still run it in within SLAs, and I don't have to, I don't have to try and find a one size fits all solution. One of the other key differentiators um, that we saw with Snowflake was the data use point. They typically, like I said, when we produce um, some kind of data product or analysis, the next question is, okay, well, can we send this to here? Can we send it to there? Can we use it to do this? Can we use it to do that? One of the one of the difficulties with doing that is that that often involves lengthy, complicated ETL um, development processes often with third party vendors where the ability to double check that integration or to go in and look at the data syncs is um, you know, somewhat difficult, if not impossible. And one of the things that we loved about Snowflake was the movementless data sharing. I can create a data set, I can share that, and we use this routinely with external vendors and with some internal groups. I can share that data, um, without having to build any kind of ETL pipeline 
or a doing any kind of data movement. There is no data sync. Because effectively, what I'm doing is I'm just giving those vendors limit um, or those other internal groups limited access to my data. I, I'm not actually producing a copy of the data. I'm just giving them a pointer back to my data. So when my their data, their view of the data is always in sync with my view of the data because there's no actual sync. Um, if I need to remove access to that data point, I just turn it off, it's a line of SQL. If I need to add a data point or to modify historical data, not a problem, I just do it and they'll immediately see those changes replicated. And that was a huge benefit to um, to us and a huge differentiator for us as we were looking to adopt the adopt a cloud platform. Mm -hmm.